Let's talk about pedigrees. A pedigree is a diagram of a family tree that shows the inheritance pattern of a trait or disorder through several generations. Pedigrees are used a lot in genetics to figure out the inheritance pattern of hereditary disorders. The first thing you have to know about pedigrees is how to read all the symbols because it looks like a lot of complicated symbols. The first symbol that you need to know is these boxes here. These boxes, um, these stand for male. And the circles, anytime you see a circle, that stands for female. Um, the next thing you notice is that some of the boxes are filled in, and some of the, or, or circles, and some of the circles and boxes are not. Anytime you have a filled in circle or box, that means that individual has the trait or the disease that you're following. So they're called the affected individual. The next thing you have to decipher in this pedigree is all the lines. So there are three lines I have to show you. This line right here is called the marriage line. And what it means is that this couple is married and they have kids together. This line right here is called the line of descent. And that means um, after that line, you have the offspring right here. And the line that goes across here this is called the sibling line, and the sibling line um, just indicates that these are siblings. So right here, you have a couple um, where she has the trade we're following, he does not have the trade, and they have three children, two sons and a girl. And the last thing you have to notice here about um, this pedigree is there is more than one generation shown and generations are indicated by Roman numerals. So you have the first generation here, second generation here, third generation and fourth generation. So let's translate this diagram that we have here into a pedigree. Okay, so you have a man and a woman and they have four children. They have a son and a daughter and another son and another daughter. And what we know from here is that the first son has the trait that we're following. He is an affected individual. Um, we also know that nobody else is showing the trait. So what we know in this case here is that this is a recessive allele because neither of the parents show the trait and yet the son has it. It has to be a recessive allele. And we're going to designate it lower case A for a recessive allele. That means that the son had to have one allele from dad and one allele from mom. And since neither the mom nor the dad show the trait themselves, they have to carry the dominant allele as well. Otherwise, they would also be an affected individual. So now that we have the genotype of the parents, we can work out the possible offspring that they can have using a Punnett square. So we're gonna make a little Punnett square like we always do. We're going to put the alleles of dad on the top. We're gonna to put the alleles of mom on the side. And these are the possible offspring that they can have. So we already know that this individual here, that's the son right here. He's the affected individual for the trait we're following. We also know from our diagram right here that two of the siblings are carriers, meaning they carry the allele for the trait, but they do not show it because it's a recessive allele. That would be this individual here and this individual here. So we'll add that to our pedigree up here these are carrier siblings. And then this individual here, which is this daughter, she's unaffected. She's not a carrier for the trade, nor does she exhibit it. So we're going to add this to our pedigree right here. So here is one important thing I want to tell you. This is how the pedigree would most often look when you look at them. However, sometimes in some pedigrees, you see these half colored in circles. And whenever you see a half colored in circle or square, that means this individual does not show the trade, but they are a carrier. So you might sometimes see it like this, 
that makes reading pedigrees much easier because it already tells you that this individual is heterozygous their carrier. Okay, so let's go through an example. So here we have a pedigree that follows the trait no dimples right here through four generations. So dimples, of course, are the little grooves that one has when one smiles, like right here. These are dimples, and no dimples is the recessive trait. So in a case like this, we know that we're following a recessive trait right away, because what I can see right here is the trait shows up in generation one, then it skips two generations, and then it shows up in generation four again. Whenever a trait skips a few generations, you know you're dealing with a recessive trait. Otherwise, it would have to show up in every generation. So we know that no dimples is the recessive allele, so that's lowercase d, and dimples is the dominant allele, which is uppercase d. And we know that any individual who shows no dimples, which is the trait we're following, um, which is these three individuals here in the pedigree, they have to have two recessive alleles, otherwise they would have dimples. So we can start, always start with what you know. So we know they have two recessive alleles, have to have two recessive alleles in order to have no dimples. From that, then, you can work backwards. You know that the parents of these two affected individuals, so the parents right here, they have to have passed on these recessive alleles. So one no dimple allele came from mom and one no dimple allele came from dad. Um, we also know that both the mom and the dad do have dimples, so what we can say is that the other allele for sure has to be the dominant allele. So we know that both of the parents are carriers for no dimples. What we also know with the siblings is that both of them have dimples. But what we can't say is whether they have two dimple alleles or whether they have one dimple allele and one non-dimple allele. And whenever in a pedigree something is possible, you have to write this in. Okay, so what else do we know? We know that this great-grandmother had to pass on a no-dimple allele to all her kids, since she is homozygous recessive. And we also know that all of them, when smiling, had dimples, so we know that the other allele was a dominant allele, since they all had dimples. And we know that the father, the great-grandfather, he had at least one dimple allele, um, Possibly he was homozygous or he was heterozygous, dimple allele, non, no dimple allele. Um, we do not know about this individual whether they were homozygous for dimples or heterozygous, but we do know that they had a dimple allele. Um, and the same holds true for this um, daughter of theirs. It could be either way. So this is how the pedigree would look. So you work backwards, often you can work out the whole genotype, and sometimes it is uncertain, like in these cases. And when it's uncertain, you just put both possibilities down. All right, awesome job.